Hey, what's up guys, I'm Styler, and in this video I'm going to review the ZTE Exxon 7 in grey that I have used as my daily driver for the last 3 weeks. This phone was originally announced back in 2016, and at that time it was only released in a special gold color. Now the price has changed, and you can currently get this flagship phone in grey to a very nice price. If you're interested in this phone, remember to check the video description for more info and a link. So without any further ado, let's start the video. The ZTE Axon 7 offers flagship specifications like a 2K AMOLED display, front stereo speakers with Dolby, Corning Gorilla Glass 4 and built-in NFC. For the current price, this may be one of the best phones out right now, because considering the price, you get a high-quality smartphone with high-end features. The phone comes in a stylish black box. With the phone you get all the usual stuff, like a quick charge 3.0 wall charger, a standard USB Type-C cable, some very nice high quality earphones, an English quick start guide, a nice clear soft cover that fits the phone perfect, and last a special metal pin for the SIM tray, and a USB Type-C to micro USB adapter. So we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, which is a quad-core CPU clocked at 2.15 GHz, a non-removable 3250 mAh battery. We also have 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of internal storage. Out of this internal storage, we have around 42 GB left, but you also have the option to install a microSD card, which then will take up one of the nano SIM slots. The tray is a bit darker, but flush with the curved frame, which indicate high build quality. The phone is solid and the back of the phone is nicely curved, similar to what's seen on the OnePlus 5, which is something I'm a big fan of, as the phone that way feels much slimmer in the hand. The back is of matte aluminum with a metallic finish that doesn't leave any annoying fingerprints, and so far it is free of any scratches, so it seems pretty resistant. It has a 20 megapixel main camera with optical image stabilization, strong dual tone LED flash and a good round 260 degree fingerprint sensor. In the top we find a front camera on 8 megapixel, combined loud and clear ear and front loudspeaker, and below in the black frame, to the right a light and proximity sensor, plus to the left a multicolored notification LED. In the bottom we find some capacitive hardware buttons, but these are unfortunately not backlit, but back and menu can be swapped in the settings. And below these another front loudspeaker, so with both speakers it will provide stereo sound. In the quick toggles you can activate Dolby Atmos, where you also find various types of preset equalizer settings or you can make your own. The sound quality is excellent for movies, music and YouTube and provides impressive high volume, good bass and nice detail. The front camera has zoom, face detection and support for face beauty and live pictures, and can also record videos in 1080p at 30 frames per second. The quality of the front camera is nice, both in good light but also in low light conditions. It can shoot pictures with good detail and sharpness. The AMOLED display is on 5.5 inch with the resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels also known as 2K and protected by Gorilla Glass 4. The display is super nice and one of the highlights on this phone. It is perfect for Google Cardboard VR because you nearly won't notice any pixels close up. It has super good viewing angles, the sharpness and brightness is high and the display colors deep and black is very deep black thanks to the AMOLED technology. 
Regarding the screen sensitivity, it's perfect, optimized and I haven't experienced any problems and the touch panel is smooth and can register up to 10 touches at the same time. In the settings you find an overview of the most used settings. In about phone you see the build, hardware info and that it is using something called Mi Favor UI which unfortunately only is based on Android 6, so for now no Android 7. Other features are CTE Logger, which is a dynamic wallpaper changer and support for themes. And in the fingerprint settings you can set it to take a photo, answer calls and quick open apps. In gesture and motions you have double tap to wake, pocket mode and flip to mute. You can swap the on-screen back and recent buttons. In screen effect you can change and optimize the colors. And in the sound settings you also find Dolby Atmos. Under more there is NFC and Android Beam. While under tap and pay you can find Android Pay. The rear fingerprint sensor works good, the accuracy is high and it works like 9 out of 10 times. The wake and unlock speed is good, but I have seen better on some Xiaomi's and the OnePlus 5. In the top we find a noise cancelling microphone and a real 3.5mm headphone jack and that's nice to see even though it also uses the new USB Type-C. The phone weighs 178 gram and is in the center 8.4mm thick. So it has a good weight and feels pretty slim in the hand thanks to the curved back. The power button and volume keys are placed on the right and also made of metal. These are tactile and very responsive. On the back you notice some antenna lines and in the bottom a USB Type-C port together with the microphone. The phone supports USB on the go, which works perfect. And the battery can be charged in no time, thanks to the Quick Charge 3.0 technology. The battery life with an on-screen time on about 6 hours is acceptable for a phone with a 2K display and good for one full day with normal mixed usage, while one and a half day could be possible if you use it very very light or enable the special ultra power saving mode. Here you see the camera app. For video you can record in up to 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second. We have OIS and various color filters. For pictures you have up to 20 megapixel. And in manual mode you can also choose some various scene modes like super night, slow motion, panorama or time lapse. Just like on the iPhone, it also has live photo. Basically, it is a picture that also can act as a small movie clip. And now to some camera samples. The camera does a good job, especially at this price point, but it can sometimes miss the correct focus if you try to shoot the pictures too fast. Overall, the pictures look nice. Even night shots look good when you manage to get the focus right. And videos are also very acceptable. Not fantastic in my opinion, but can be watched with no bigger issues. Regarding the GPS, the lock and fix is fast and it has support for cloners. Signal reception and the accuracy is what I would call average. I have used it two times as navigation in my car and it worked okay. As for the sensors, it has tons of built-in sensors and things like gyroscope, e-compass, accelerometer and the proximity sensor works perfect which means that 360 VR, YouTube and Compass will work flawless. Moving on to the performance. The CPU used in this phone is a high-end processor, so the score is high. 
In Antutu, 2, it scores close to 142,000, which is a very good score for a phone in this price class. 3D games like Asphalt 8 run smooth in high settings, with almost no frame drops so it's fully playable. And I really enjoyed gaming on this phone. Regarding heating, it does get a little bit warmer after longer time of use, but not much and nothing to be concerned about. The phone is using Mi Favor UI based on Android 6.0.1 with OTA support. The launcher is pretty smooth and clean with only few changes, but does come out of the box with some few special ZTE pre-installed apps. And of course also with the Google Play Store. Multitasking is smooth, but some apps need to reload after some time, while scrolling and zooming in the browser is smooth and fast. The network connectivity is ok on this phone and it can connect to 2G, 3G and 4G. With 2G and 3G the signal reception was in top, while with 4G the reception was a bit lower. It has dual band Wi-Fi with support for 2.4 and 5 GHz, where the download speed was on about 118 megabits, so really fast. And last, with the newest YouTube app, you can play videos in 1080p at 60 frames per second with no lag, or in 1440p with normal frame rate. Now to my final verdict. The ZTE Axon 7 is a real flagship device with high-end specs and a very cool design. It is easy to see and feel that this phone once have been really expensive. It is definitely not just a cheap budget phone like some other models from China. The display is beautiful, battery life is good, the front stereo speakers delivers excellent sound and the performance for apps and 3D games is top. That being said, it does also have some bad sides. The camera quality is good, but not on pair with today's devices from Samsung or Apple. Also it is missing backlit buttons. The fingerprint sensor seems a bit slow compared to other flagships. The bezels could have been thinner. And it is totally missing Android 7, which is a shame. Bottom line though, is that for the money, you here get a lot of features like for example NFC, superior user experience and top hardware on a very high quality level. So the question, can I recommend the ZTE Axon 7? Definitely yes. Currently it is hard to find another phone at this price point which offers the same in terms of quality and features. So if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below, drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.